what is up guys and of course welcome to an are you showdown actually or not showdown but i'll showcase and you know close enough um today's video we're gonna talk about are you tier in general we're gonna go over the pokemon that are in the are you tier pokemon to watch out for pokemon that are super viable clearly and also strats that may or may not actually be viable also due to that very reason alone uh, the reason i'm doing this is because i'm a very very big fan of lower tiers since of course generation six but I also want, of course, to force that, you know, it's in alpha phases right now, so there are a lot of things that are clearly not there to stay, so you might as well try to use them, or at least we have the chance to talk about them, because there are all things here that is, um, well, broken would be unfair, but definitely very, very strong. And if you follow Pokem, he said that 19 Pokemon left it here, actually, in February. That's not true, it was actually 16, but still, there were a lot of Pokemon that was forced to leave this tier, and uh, trust me, leaving the tier was mainly because of their actually was a bit too strong for tier on, on their own. And quite honestly, that is kind of what it's kind of tempered off on. It's just one of those things. Pokemon are clearly too far for a tier level. Uh, for example, Tokus was one of those Pokemon that definitely needed to go. So with that said, we're going to go over a course as stated. The Pokemon that are in here in this tier, we're going to give them some kind of viability ranking and small strat and then i'm gonna go over of course what the most common strats are right now and should have also said that i am not a meta guy in that essence but i can definitely see you know the things that are most common doesn't mean that it's the most viable strat but those are the things you really need to watch out for so with that said let's of course go over pokemon one by one we're gonna start with of course absol first off here absol is definitely one of those that really gonna stay and um, its main issue, of course, is very, very high attack of 130 and 75 in speed is not that impressive. But with, of course, the snatch of the C move, uh, it actually makes this Pokemon a bit more viable and definitely more um, thrusting over a team, really, because it doesn't necessarily need any kind of attack raise, clearly. I've seen Sword Stances, but trust me, you don't ever need to go for that. You need, usually only need Knock Up Superpower and, of course, uh, Fire Blast to be able to, of course, deal with things that could possibly wall you. So, uh, Snatch and, of course, Max Speed Adamant is a very, very viable set for it. So, it's definitely, you know, one of those 7 out of 10 Pokemon. Uh, Axelgore, um, as steady as ever, um, it's definitely going to recite itself really well in RU. It does really well in other tiers too, but it does have issues, and I do believe that's the reason it's kind of held back here. Uh, definitely, in my regards, you know, 8 out of 10. Um, I do believe it's a very, very, it's, it's a very reliant stacker. So, it's... Um, it's gonna stay. I kind of believe in that, giving everybody some kind of um, <laughs> ranking, maybe just some dumb. Anyway, <laughs> you know, I'll only say if they're viable or not. Aerodactyl, um, super viable, clearly. Um, one of there are those very, very high speeds here, and you know, of course, with flying now, as it says, that uh, supersonic sky strike, Aerodactyl can be really scary. And together with, of course, Continental Crush and Stone Edge. So the only thing that holds our deck back is that it isn't that bulky, but it's, trust me, in RU, that's, that's not a bad thing if you can kill the things that try to actually kill you in the end. So Horn Claw is probably what most people are going to wear it with, and if not, then, you know, it can also be a very reliant stealth rocker with Focus Sash. Uh, Alma Mola. I hate that Pokemon, I really do, but if I had to say something about it, I'm going to say that it's very weird that it always resides itself in RU. It's probably one of the best Shakes to Landers T, actually. So it's kind of funny to see that Almamola yet again is in RU with Regenerator. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's viable. It's one of those really, really defined walls. And it seems to be some kind of stature in RU. I do believe this is a third, yeah, third generation role would actually resides in RU. It's gonna stay, it's not gonna fall to you by any chance of imagination. Uh, Ambipalm, uh, one of those Pokemon I think most people know are, it's not bad, but it always has steep competition. And I wouldn't be surprised to see it fall to you, though Technician and Skilling, though mainly Technician Fake Out, are, is a thing. It's, it's super annoying to be dealing with, and it does hurt, and it is fast, so. It has a lot of things that is good for it. Just the question is, is it good enough for RU? And that's, that's kind of are in that kind of middle area where, yeah, maybe, but probably not. So that's really all I'm going to say. I know there are a lot of Abipom lovers out there, but trust me, this is a mod that are struggling, and it's struggling for the very right reasons. It has just a very, very steep competition, considering how RU looks in this generation. Uh, Araquanid. 
Um, bit weird actually to see here, the War Absorb and Water Bubble are two super good abilities, and actually War Absorb kinda in this tier makes sense. Uh, I will say Water Bubble due to the extra strength are good, but at the same time, Water Absorb kinda looks really good right now with all the Skull Spamming, I mean, kinda just taking all Alamol and being able to Toxic it, yes, I'm talking about the defense of Raccoonina right now, it is definitely one of those that stands out a little bit more, but trust me, Water Bubble set would of course a stockpile C move is also just as scary, and um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm definitely believing that Arachnid has a very good chance of actually leaving the tier due to the extra strength that this Pokemon has naturally, but one might never know. It, uh, it does have the speed issue, and that is a very real thing for a Pokemon with its type and combination. Uh, Aromatis, um, definitely stay in RU, I don't believe it's gonna fall. Um, a very good trick room setter, a very good supporter. Uh, it it has not gained anything this generation, nor has it necessarily lost anything either. So it's it's gonna say it's definitely one of the best fair types in all you. Uh, Blastoise is probably one of the best spinner. Um, that's really all I can say. I never used Blastoise too much when it was introduced in RU in Generation 6, but it wasn't good stature. It definitely wasn't falling to NU, and it's very likely not to do that either, due to, of course, this very broad move pool, rapid spin, clearly, and uh, it it's bulky. It does take damage really well, and it is able to retaliate with Scald. You know, with the Scald nerf, I do believe Blastoise still is kind of relevant, because it is kind of speedy. I mean, 78 base speed for a bulky Roman is actually quite scary, and it could definitely hold its own fairly well. Uh, Braviary, Share Force is a thing, Defiant is a thing with Intimidators, it's gonna stay, um, it's definitely not, one of the few mods I definitely believe have a very rough time to be much much worse than RU, uh, very high attack and decent speed, a very good scar for a band user, but of course it's return, uh, was it returns, Braver, Superpower, and of course Rock Slide, you've got a bulk upset, there are a lot of things going on with that Pokemon, that just stands like, mm, it's it's awesome. Uh, Bronzong, um, the Cowbell. I, I really, really like Bronzong. I, I've said it over and over again. I do believe Bronzong is a super underrated Pokemon with its abilities of, of course, Heat Proof and Levitate. It actually has Heavy Metal and, of course, Heavy Slam, I do believe. So, you know, that's a thing. But, yeah, Bronzong is, um, it lacks recovery, but it's a very, very good, of course, screen setter and stealth rocker. And it is actually quite formidable. He's very, very has a very easy time of actually walling things out. So that's definitely not just anything to sleep on. Is it too good in RU? No, no, it's not. And uh, it's worth mentioning that you know it's probably one of the stature in RU and is definitely viable for it. Just not overly powerful. Uh, then we got Bruxes, which is definitely a Pokemon that I believe are going to stay in RU. But I believe it will be one of the primary sweepers in it. Bruxius, due to the strong jaw ability and its typing and its magnificent attack and accessibility to sword stance and bulk up, as uh, showcases himself to be a very, very, very scary mon. Usually, of course, Psychic Fangs, Waterfall, and Crunch uh, does do what it needs to do against a plethora of matchups. Now, I've seen that such a bit of Ice Fang and stuff like that. You don't necessarily need that. I do believe the combination of Psychic, um, Psychic Waterfall and, uh, not oh, Psychic Fang, sorry, and uh, Crunch hits the things that matter outside of the Dark and Water Pokemon in the tier, which aren't that many and, trust me, might not actually be that very likely to stay in the tier, though if you want to adjust yourself for it, you, uh, Bruxius has some move pull to pull that off. But yeah, Bruxius, due to 92 speeds here, is not the most viable sweeper, but at the same time, it does pack a punch. Another state here, Sword Stance and Life Orb. Yeah, this thing does hurt. And um, yeah, most people, I do believe, don't use it because it's kind of ugly. But if you get aside that and see this fish as something beautiful, which is kind of hard to do, then you realize that this is a very, very superb sweeper. So try it out. You won't be disappointed. It's, it's just, it's really weird how good this Pokemon really is. Uh, Chestnut, that thing can't stay. <laughs> I'm sorry, Chestnut is definitely too good for the tier. One of the best stacker when it comes to spikes, a very good elite seed staller, and of course a very, very viable attack pool, a very high attack, very good defense, kind of niche special defense, and it's definitely speedier than your average spiker. So Chestnut stands out, Bulletproof makes it even harder to kill, Sludge Bomb is not a option for it, and that is really awesome. So, while I could see Chestnut stay in RU, I definitely believe it is a bit on edge of actually being how viable it is. And of course, it's so kids like a champ. 
and that's never a good thing in this kind of environment. Plus, it's definitely one of those number one checks for Almamola because Woodhammer just hurts a lot. <laughs> so that's probably the most like as long as Chess not in tier, Almamola won't be as scary as many people think it is. Mainly because of Woodhammer, it just just fucks up <laughs> Almamola so much. Uh, Shinchino. Same same thing there as with Amipom. I'm not gonna go and say anything else there. It's it's the same kind of issue. Clawlista in RU, in I actually heard that it isn't as used anymore, and um, it could be very likely that it falls to NU. I won't say it's bad enough to be an NU, but it's definitely one of those Pokemon that it has a very good niche. It's very very strong, but it, there are all there are so many other water types there that people tend to not use it. Uh, with that said, Clawlister is fairly viable. I would definitely say that it has uh, it has a reason to be used in a tier. Uh, most common sets, of course, are Salt Vest, since it has a very, very good mixed defense. Um, Scarf is also one of those really good things on it, um, and you would be fine either way with it, honestly. Uh, Cloyster, that thing is scary. Uh, like, the Shell Smash set is so good here. Uh, I don't think there is any other reason using Cloyster outside of that. It does get overcoat, which kind of enforces that you could use it in a possible sand team if you so desire. But trust me, it's a shell smasher, and the finest at that, and it definitely not staying. <laughs> Confagricus, same as previous generation, really. It's didn't gain anything this generation, definitely didn't lose anything either, and it's just as annoying to deal with as ever. It's, it's actually fairly viable in UU and OU too, but... Um, it just doesn't stand out that much, and uh, I think that's its main issue. It's definitely one of those better trick room setters, such of aromatase, and that's kind of what we get that. Comfy. Um, here's the thing. I have a very hard time dealing with Comfy. Um, that's that's my honest honest truth. But as long as viability goes, I don't think it's a good enough fairy to be staying in RU, but I'm glad if it does, because if this thing is viable in NU2, that's gonna be pretty freaking shitty. Uh, but yeah, Comfy, um, due to Triage, of course, it's um, its ability, it actually has a niche when it comes to our speeds, everything with a draining cache, and of course with Calm Mind, this thing could be very, very viable. And uh, at the moment, it doesn't have the move pool to deal with the things that kind of deals with it, but it's good to know that Comfy does have some kind of viability onto it. Uh, Crabominal. I don't know how this guy is doing anymore. Uh, I like Crabominal, I'm, but yeah, that's the thing. Um, I think it's definitely held back with his typing at the moment, and um, yeah, I definitely could believe this thing goes as far as in you. But the stabs are great, and that's kind of what I'm going to force here. If, if you use this thing with Tailwind, that this thing could be really, really, really dumb to be trying to stop. But it's clearly a strong Pokemon. It clearly it's it is stats, so that's not gonna go away. Uh, but if it's viable enough for RU, time really has to tell. I do believe at the moment it is definitely forced up a lot of matchups. So I can't say anything really on it. That's probably one of the few I really can't say anything. Uh Crawdont, I don't believe this could stay. Adaptability Aqua Jet is still like a like a real deal. Um, Waterfall, Crab Hammer, and Knockoff, Dragon Dance. You know, this, this Pokemon is super frustrating to be dealing with. And quite honestly, Crawlon is, um, it's good in its year because of the next one on the list, but that's where I draw the line. Crawlon is definitely too powerful for this tier. Same goes for the Pokemon downside at Cresselia, clearly. <laughs> Though, um, as long as Crawlon is active, Cresselia won't be as dangerous. Even though Cresselia can go for Moonblast, it can also take a pretty freaking sucker knockoff to the face and probably die. And, um, yeah, though I kind of see both kind of go. Same thing with Darmanitan down on the... I do believe as long as Crawlon is active, as stated, um, Darmanitan won't be as scary. But Crawlon kind of keeps this guy in check. I'm pretty sure these two actually are too powerful for the tier. Uh, these three... Just they're 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 just up there. Um, Gel Fox, um, same thing as previous tier. Though I do you believe it got him better with, of course, Snatch, um, Crick, and of course the C moves in Born with it. It is already fast enough, and it's definitely one of those really really good sweepers. And of course with C moves, are of course Solar Beam, the game, of course Doom Bloom. It could be even more frustrating to be dealing with because it has actually Shockwave also. 
So it doesn't even accessibility of going for a sim, which is literally type based. So Dell Fox has a very, very strong niche, and um, I'm not gonna say it's strong enough to argue because I don't think it is. But it has niches to actually outshine itself from previous generation because it did gain some viability in C moves, and that's definitely what I'm in force here. Delphox might not be the most viable Pokemon Generation 6 in RU. I do believe it's going to step it up a little bit this time and definitely be good enough to maybe even outgrow RU this time around. Uh, then she... Eh. Diamond Storm is better. You get plus two. It still has the same issues. Maybe the Enchi is a different different story, clearly. But um, regular Enchi has the same issues as previously. Not speed enough. Doesn't hurt enough. But it is fairly bulky. But that's where I sadly draw the line. I don't believe that Yenshi is much better than previous generation. It's definitely going to stay in RU. It's definitely not weak enough to be an NU, if anything. John Fan. Ah, uh, yeah, I can see it stay in RU this generation. And it doesn't need to have, have anything to do with its viability necessarily. It's just so many better ground types got introduced here and got a decent buff this time around that Dolphin might just not be as good. Though, Dolphin does have a very broad accessibility with, of course, C moves, so it, it has gotten a decent buff. It's just a question whether or not that buff is helping it more than it already does, because the standard set is the bulkier Earthquake variant with, of course, Rapid Spin. It might not be able to save it, but it's very good to know that Dolphin is in RU. I want to see it tested in RU. Um, because it didn't do too well in UU in Generation 6. It doesn't mean that it was bad, it just means there was so many other Pokemons that could do a similar thing, and it's, it's kind of the same issue here. There are only so many things that Dolphin can do that others already are doing. One of them are here, which of course may also be able to stay. Uh, we're going to talk about that Pokemon very, very soon. Uh, we're going to follow that up with Dewblade. Dewblade is also a Pokemon that I do believe is not really residing in RU that long. It has a lot of perks with it. Its defensive typing is just up there with, of course, the Violite. It's just one of those mods that, while it is slow, yeah, it still does kind of take hits really well. It just set up and hurts really well. It has a very, very high attack stat. So, yeah, it's not going to stay. I I'm a hard time believing that. Plus, it checks so many decent things that are in the higher tiers. Most people use Dublade to kind of ensure that they're not swept by individual fighting types. And this is what Dublade does. And, uh, I mean, Dewblade is one of those few Pokemons that come in on Kabelion and just like, fuck up, bro. <laughs> Get out of my face. And there's where draw, draw the line here. Dewblade is just, it's it's too good. And it's too good in other tiers to stay in RU. Though it could have the same kind of situation as Alamola to be very viable in other tiers, though just doesn't get enough usage. Um, Dragolgi. I've always been very firm with Dragolgi. I never thought it was good enough to be in, in BL. Previous generation, I'm 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 a firm believer of taking that back due to C moves actually this time around. Um, Devastating Drake is one of those things with C moves that would of course that ability that just makes this oh so freaking tough to be dealing with. Tragolius got to go. Uh, it's too powerful and it has a lot to do with its adaptability and toxic spikes. It's it's a good typing. It has a lot of issues, sure with the speed and whatnot, but that's that's about it. Like Dragaldi is one of those Pokemon that just does things right, and that's not gonna change. Uh, Grandpa, I don't know. Grandpa probably one of the other few I actually don't necessarily know too much about. Uh, Joe, I know it is a bit on the slow side and doesn't necessarily want to soak a close combat. Uh, if it's forced for, but that's that's the thing though. Specs user is super scary. Um, we have this citrus set, which also is super scary, doesn't make it even worse. So Drampa could very well stay in RU. It definitely is too strong for NU. I don't believe there are too many Pokemon that can take it on properly. Uh, fun footnote: Drampa, with stabs in mind, does cannot take on Dublay, but it does get Fire Blast. But that's a good thing that Dublay probably is one of the few they probably can actually try try to take a a, a stab attack from it. Anyway, Drapion, same as ever, gonna stay. That, that's not gonna go. <laughs> I don't think I need to say too much about Drapion. Um, let's see, Dragon, same thing there. That's, that's gonna stay. Um, I don't think you got enough to be, become better here. It's one of the better stealth rockers in RU. Um, I do believe it's actually, it's just kind of severe in the certain purpose here. Then we have a Lowland Dug Trio, which, um, 
It's it's very debatable um, whether or not it's viable enough for RU. I would say this, uh, as long as sand is viable in RU, because at the moment um, the only the only weather condition that is banned from the tiers are drizzle and OU. Uh, in, other than that, it is available everywhere uh, in every tier at the moment. So if sand for Zaxi would of course give it in mind then um, Doug Trio might very well stay in RU mainly because that combination is pretty freaking devastating and uh, trust me 110 speed here might not be the most scary speed here but it is definitely enough to hurt things <laughs> and of course with sand force in mind yeah it's kind of pushing it so I will say that Doug Trio stays as long as sand is active and uh, Durant I don't know I mean hustle is a thing <laughs> It's freaking devastating. Uh, I definitely think Durant is a very, very powerful Pokemon. It got banned in the previous generation. I wouldn't be surprised to see it banned here either. But at least I hope it gets an honest chance here to go out, go about itself. The reason Durant is so cool, sorry for joining, is because of the hustle. It's because of the choice band instead. It's because Iron Head does hurt. Um, and of course, with C moves in mind, this thing could, you know, the sky is the limit in this one. And, uh, yeah, Durant is awesome. And <laughs> it's just a matter of fact. So I can definitely see it stay in RU, but I'm pretty sure it will go BL. You so good they take a longer time this time around. And Electros. I heard that it didn't have enough usage in RU to be able to possibly stay. I wouldn't be surprised to see Electros fall to NU, but then it would be one of the most viable Pokemon in NU. Electros is a very good Pokemon with a very bad rep. Um, it doesn't get good enough moves to be viable in a long time, and I do believe that's the kind of the reason Electros is, well, I wouldn't say forgettable, because that would be very untrue, but Electros is, how do you say, it can't do enough stuff to be extreme in RU, and that's that's where it's falter. Um, but as I say that, it, it has a very broad move pool, it can do a lot of things, just it doesn't excel in any of them. Uh, Embo, same as ever. Entei, that's gotta go. Um, Entei definitely stands out here. Entei is probably one of the number one Pokemons here that are just so formidable. Um, Choice Band and Sacred Fire are just the worst. <laughs> so Entei, yeah, at least you, you please. Uh, Escavalia, same thing there, same as ever, definitely stay in RU. Espeon, I like Espeon in RU, it's pretty freaking sweet to use, but it is very, very, very tough to stop. The Call Mine, Magic Bounce Set, and Sweepish, yeah, that's incredibly annoying to deal with. So, um, no. I don't think Espeon is staying, mainly because of the Magic Bounce. It, it's such a good ability to get it with a very, very high attack and special attack. But one might never know. But my honest to God guess is that probably no. Uh, definitely you, your material. Alolan Executor. <laughs> Explode. Um, probably staying. Probably staying, are you? Uh, I do believe it has the same kind of viability as it has as previous generation. Didn't get anything here in Blitzkrieg uh, with Scrappy is not what I want to use it for in a way for Boom Burst is just that good. Uh, for Alligator, gotta go. I don't think I need to explain why for Alligator gotta go, but I gotta go. Uh, Flordius could very well be staying, are you? Uh, it has a lot to do with the fairies in, um, in UU. Florius is not bad though, that's the thing. I, like Florius has a very, very good relevance in UU. So it's kind of the same thing as I said about Alamola previously, that it does have a very strong niche in the other tiers, but it could have very well be the lack of usage that pushes to, of course, RU. Does it mean it's bad? It just means that it it fits certain kind of matchup. And I do believe with the fairies introduced in this generation, it has a tougher time actually resides in team. But at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised to see in UU either because it is just as viable as it was previous generation. Uh, Frostlass, please stay in RU this time. Um, here's the thing, I I don't think Frostlass are that good of a Pokemon. The stamps are awesome though, I mean it's definitely up there. But I don't believe Frostlass stands out enough 
to be um, to be recalled as you know so one of those really really viable Pokemons. So please, this time stay in our you, Roslas. I need you. I want to use you in our you for time here. Um, Galade, same as ever. Galventula. I don't know. I mean, it got you know really really used um, a lot. You know, of course, in um, when uh, oh, what do you say? When uh, ba 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 ba, damn, this video is getting kind of long, isn't it? Um, Galvanic got a lot used a lot when Stickweb was introduced in Generation Six. Kind of faltered, didn't leave, of course, it's here because Stickweb always was some kind of relevance. It still is, and Galvanic might as very well do that very reason actually move up to UU. It is definitely not a Pokemon that I do believe are hard to deal with uh, when it comes to what it what it brings offensively. But it's a defensive part that kind of, um, or and the supporting part, of course, that makes this Pokemon so tough. So I wouldn't be surprised if it moved up just for that very own reason. Stick web is just one of those things. It's it's everything or nothing. And I believe Galvanishla brings a lot of everything most of the time. Uh, Gardevoir, I don't know. If Gardevoir is, a, you know, the statue of fairy type in RU, it's going to be the... Fair type in RU, that's gauge because it has a decent speed here. But God of War is, has a lot of niches going on and has a lot of strings with that. You know, I do believe 1 in 25 is one, yeah, 1 in 25 special attack. So it is a very scary Pokemon to be able to actually force up dealing with. Uh, the only thing that separates this guy from Espeon is that Espeon is actually faster. Uh, God of War is usually our choice locked and, um, it's holding it back. Question is, is it holding it enough to actually prevent it from moving to UU? If it's staying in RU, it's going to be one of the more dangerous Pokemon in it. And I wouldn't be surprised if it moved all the way up because Gardevoir is just that tough of a mod to be dealing with. Gigalith, stay in RU? I don't know how viable you are, but stay, buddy. Damn it. Um, that's all I really can say. As, like I said, as long as Sand is viable in RU, um, there are a lot of other Pokemon that will stand out a little bit more. Uh, Firmly, of course, Alolan Dug Trio, but one might never know. Uh, Gigalith might as well actually be a more sand dedicated sweeper or uh, wall in um, UU. By the time Hippowdon kind of are siding there, so as long as Hippowdon is there, I don't think Gigalith moves up either. Uh, Glalie as the Mega. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much the same. Gligar, probably the best stealth rocker defogger in the game. Uh, definitely, in my honest opinion, better than Dolphin at the moment. Though they did both reside in UU previous generation, previous generation, but the Gligar is, in my honest opinion, the better one. Um, so we just have to see what time has to tell. But Gligar, like I said here, is probably the one of these two that will move up because Gligar, as a defensive typing and vitalize and of course recovery, it's a nasty Pokemon to be dealing with. Um, Golem, a Lolan form, no, Glycopod. That is a very, very, very different dialogue, actually. I do believe Golisopod is um, is very hard to use for most teams, but it does have the stat to be relevant, and um, it might as very well just stay, and I really like that idea. It does have a, a niche of a spike user, but mainly, of course, first impression is the reason you use this. So I'll say Golisopod probably going to stay in RU. It's definitely not going to move so down to actually NU, um, I, the stats kind of kind of define it as that's not gonna happen, but you know one might never know. Gudra, that thing gotta go up. I don't think it's gonna say. Um, it didn't gain anything this generation. That's kind of the thing I want to kind of force it on a little bit. Gudra did not get much better, but at the same time, it doesn't. It it haven't gotten much worse either. And that's kind of what I'm enforced here. Gudra is a very, very powerful Pokemon. And for RU, this is a real threat. Um, so, yeah, it's got to go up. Gramble, oh, same thing as ever. Uh, people tend to use it as a defensive responsible uh, fairy type, and it does a very good job at it. So I don't see why that would change in RU whatsoever. Uh, Gumchews. <sighs> Gustlord. Um, I... Uh, I have my reasons to believe it's gonna stay RU. I don't think it can fall much longer. People have been stating over and over again that Gustlord is not a good Pokemon. It's definitely not an High Dragon. And I, I agree. I definitely agree. But what what will happen to Gustlord if High Dragon is not a competition? Um, 
And Gustlord has a very, very powerful uh, move pool, if anything. And while it does kind of fall through with a lot of weaknesses, it also gets stockpiled and stockpiled as a C move, which is, you know, one of those things that makes this Pokemon very hard to kill. Uh, I've seen Assault Vest and I see the leftovers, both of them being clearly viable. It has enough HP to utilize Assault Vest really well. So, um, yeah, this guy is a limit for Gust Lord as long as Hydreigon is not a factor for, you know, the combination of the typing itself. So, go Gust Lord! I hope, I really hope the best for you, if anything. Um, Hawalucha! That thing's gotta go. I, I really can't define this Pokemon much more than, you know, this is this is one of the few Pokemon that just eats teams, and that's gonna, that's not going to end. That's going to keep going. How <laughs> Lucha is definitely going. Uh, Haxor is si same dialogue. Um, it's got to go. It's also eats teams, still. Like a lot. Uh, Heliolisk. Ah, that's the thing, though. I won't kill this here as long as another certain Pokemon is here. Heliolisk has always been stated as one of those really powerful Pokemon. And sometimes I agree, sometimes I don't. And most of the time I don't. I actually think it could stay in RU for, for what it's worth. But it should be noted that only one is here as long as a certain Pokemon is here. If that Pokemon goes, then so does Heliolisk. And then it's gonna go because it's such a good response for it. Uh, Heracross in RU, no. I mean, with the Talonflame nerf, I don't think Heracross got in worse enough to say in RU. I actually believe it could even rise to OU if you so desire. So, no, I think Heracross got to move up, and it has a lot of a lot of reasons for Moxie and Scoff. That's just one of those things. Uh, Hitmonlee, Hitmontop, I could just broaden them together. They are staying RU. They're, they're, they, 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 they didn't have anything with them. Uh, Hunchcrow was RU for a short time in uh, Generation 6. Um... Whether or not it should stay this time or not, it's definitely not up to me. I'm, I don't believe Honchkrow is that scared of a Pokemon. Uh, it does get a very, very powerful Sucker Punch, which is definitely one of those things that I do believe most people will watch out for. It has a lot of things in in common with Absol, actually, the more I think about it, uh, with a broader mood pool. So, yeah, I mean, if if it goes, it goes for its offensive capabilities, and I really don't know how well they're doing in RU at the moment. Uh, at the time being, I don't believe the matchup are making Hunchcrow more viable than it is today. Uh, I can tell you that much. Uh, Hoopa, are you? I mean, the seam of Snatch is one thing here. I really want to say that that's a factor for Hoopa. Uh, with that said, I don't believe Hoopa is overly powerful either. I do see those 150 special attacks. I'm not trying to like laugh at you guys or anything, but it's it still has issues. Um, so... I don't know. Um, if it's more usable, it is actually double the speed, and it can... I mean, this thing kills other Pokemons easily, and that's not going to end, if anything. <laughs> uh, Houndoom, same as ever. Um, Incineroar, I don't know about that. I definitely think Incineroar is... Uh, as long as Intimidate isn't a factor here, that it might very well fall to NU. Once int Intimidate is a thing, it might as well rise again. But yeah, that's, I I don't believe that. Uh, Jellicent, same as ever. Weaker Skull, but that's about it. Jolteon, same as ever. Um, I'm sorry if I call it kind of boring here, but Pokemon have already been a stature in the tier. I kind of don't feel the reason to kind of explain uh, why they should be considered you know, better or worse. Uh, Kabutops. Since Drizzle got banned, I don't believe Kabutops will say an RU. Um, it doesn't mean it's better or anything, but um, it needs Drizzle to be scary. Uh, Kumala gotta say an RU. Um, I wouldn't mind if it fell even further, but I don't think it's bad enough to fall further. Uh, B, No, Curem. <laughs> um, it could actually stay RU. Um, here's the thing, though. I do believe Curem is a very, very tough Pokemon to be dealing with overall in RU, and um, its move pool kind of kind of forces that it could be a bit on the too powerful side to actually resize in RU for a longer time. But it also worth mentioning that Curem is always having an issue, and with of course that freaking Comfy now active with that priority draining kiss, one might never know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, my honest guess is that Kyurem actually going to move up anyway because it's still one of those really, really good ice Pokemon. It's definitely speed enough and has a very, very high mixed attack. 
So yeah, he could move up. Same thing with Lucario. I'm not going to try to justify it here. Haha. <laughs> but, um, or justify. But, um, yeah, Lucario is very, very good just in general. So I don't think it's huge as in Yu Yu define it as bad. So it's, uh, it has to move up. Uh, Laurentis is not going to stay. It's a defogger though. It's a very decent defogger. But yeah, I don't think it's staying. I actually think it's going to fall even further. Uh, the Sandrock might actually resize itself in RU, and I don't think that would be a bad thing for it. Uh, the Sandrock Midnight is another thing. Um, it could stay, uh, but it also could fall. Um, if it's fall to in U, then it's going to be very viable. Uh, I definitely believe that, but yeah. These two, the Sandrock overall, or Lucan Rock, I, I can't remember the name, how it was said, but they have their niches, and whether or not their niches are strong enough, yeah, it's all very debatable. Uh, Machamp. I don't know. I don't mind it, are you? But it's very, very annoying. Uh, Bandit, choice Bandit dynamic punch is just one of those things. Brings the best in people. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it actually moved away. Uh, Minisham, same as ever. Milouette, the same as ever. It's Malorik. Could very well be staying this time. Not that Melodic is bad, but it has the same issues as Jellicent, though minus the knockoff issue, of course. But it just doesn't do enough. It would, of course, this called nerf, and it would burn nerf. Melodic actually got another element to it that while it is hurting things, it doesn't hurt things enough without that residual damage. And yeah, like I said, it might just be the very well reason Malolik stays actually in RU. Uh, Minior, I'm kind of surprised it is here. Um, don't get me wrong here, but Shell Smash Minior is very, very dangerous, so I'm, I'm kind of surprised. I won't really deny that. Uh, Moltres, it's always kind of residing in, in RU and got banned previous generation, but it could very well be saying this time around, mainly because Moltres has a lot of issues and they're not fixing themselves. Even though burnout actually was a thing now, it still doesn't save it. It just is another element of attack for it. That's really all about it. Um, Mudstale, it could very well be seen, are you? Um, if it falls even further, it's going to be very tough to stop. Uh, it's one of those really good um, mixed defensive Pokemon with a very high attack. While it doesn't do a lot for a lot of teams here, it's still the stamina and, of course, a Salt Vest set. It's so tough to stop it. It's it's one of those Pokemon that just kind of just outshines. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if this thing actually stayed. Are you uh, Nido King and Queen? Um, I think they're both gonna move up mainly because of their offensive typing and chance of, of course, their move pool being so broad. But yeah, that's about it, really. Um, that's all I can say. I'm, I don't believe they're staying much longer here. Uh, Noivern. Please stay RU this time. It got banned previous generation, and um, I, I think it's yeah, I think it's a very powerful Pokemon. But I mean, they're always been uh, heads to heads with Flygon, and while it did outmaneuver Flygon previous generation, this generation Flygon got actually Dragon Dance. I think Noivern got less viable, and I really hope that shows. But uh, yeah, one might never know. But I definitely think it's gonna be staying RU this time around. Uh, Ranguru. Uh -huh. <laughs> what does that thing even do? <laughs> um, the Oricoro series, same thing there as uh, Oranguru, if you're going to say it. They're going to be in you eventually, even though they have their niches. Uh, Palos Sand, nay, I don't think it's going to be sane, are you? Uh, Pangoro, uh, might very well go to you, you. I don't believe why. I, I can't see the reason why Pangoro is here. Uh, you got this generation bullets, bullet seed, I was gonna say, but bullet punch. Bullet seed would be awesome though. But bullet punch and of course C move in, of course, me first, getting its speed at times two. So, Pangora's got him more viable, and I'm, I just think it's a matter of time. I do freaking Pangora freaking shits on team every time. That, that's not gonna go away. Uh, Pesimian, uh, worst prime map, get out of here. Um, Percy and Alola. Um, Politoed, <laughs> I'm not even going to say anything about them. Um, they're definitely moving down. Uh, Porygon 2, I want this Pokemon away from this tier now. Please. 
Um, the thing is that Foregon 2 is actually fairly viable and clearly uh, it, it is very needed right now because of the attackers that are very relevant to the tier. But, um, I mean, Porygon 2 is just going to be as relevant as, of course, those offensive mines active. Which means that Porygon 2 going to go soon to UU. Which means that those powerful Pokemon probably will be banned because there will be an insane amount of imbalance in born with that. Uh, Quillfish. I don't know. Um, I mean, it's one of those Pokemon that has a very high viability ranking in RU but aren't used as often in RU. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing Quillfish in NU, but... Trust me, Quillfish has a re very, very staggering residence in, in our use, he's definitely going to say. Uh, Raichu has a lowland form. No. Um, Radicate a lowland form. No. Uh, Registeel. Yes. He's going to say are you for the same reason it was are you previous generation. Reuniclus. Got to move up. Um, I, I'm pretty sure it has to move up. Uh, Rhyperior. Yes. going to stay. Or rather, um, it is as much of the same Pokemon as it was in RU. And while it has a big viability in other rankings or other tiers, uh, I do believe RU is a fair tier for it, no matter what. Uh, Ribombi could very well be seen in RU. I uh, would not be surprised to see it in UU either, but it does have a fair amount of issues. Uh, Roserade, that's got to go up. Uh, Rodent Heat and more. I'm going to actually judge them the same. They are just as viable in UU as in RU. I wouldn't mind seeing them stay in RU. Uh, Sableye. No, that thing's gotta go. I definitely believe that thing's gotta go. Um, mainly because of the prankster, but also it's a good defensive typing. It does a lot of work for a lot of teams. Uh, and in UU right now, as long as Entei is active, Sableye might not be as threatening. But that time will end eventually. Uh, Celestial. I don't know too much about it, sadly. Uh, the only thing I can say about Celestial is that I do believe it's um, it's speedy. Uh, it can set Toxic Spikes. It can actually deal with Defensive Wall really well and actually Toxic them. and actually has a very high uh, or high chance of actually setting up, uh, what do you call it, a Nasty Plot. So it has a very good mixed capabilities of actually just dealing really well with teams. But I don't know. I don't know how viable it is in UU. Uh, so for the time being, I don't think you can fall much lower in RU than, of course, um, you guys who use it has to say the rest. Uh, Sash last alone form. <laughs> Sork. <sighs> for, for all I care, this thing could be Ubers, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see it fall back to NU again. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see it banned from NU again either. Uh, Scrafty. Ah. I don't know. As long as Pangoro is here, Scrafty could actually very well fall to NU. I'm, I'm not going to take that away. Uh, but if Pangoro goes, then Scrafty going to be just as active as ever. Uh, Seismitoad was NU previous generation. Has a reason to be NU this generation too. But it is also one of the most versatile Pokemon in the game. So if that's a very own reason, I'm going to actually say that please stay. Because you're an awesome Pokemon in RU. Uh, Sharpedo. Um, the um, bootleg Bruxius, no, probably the other way around. Um, thing is here, I do believe Sharpedo could use itself really well in UU, but this time I actually think it has steep enough competition to not be banned from RU. Though Bruxius is probably its number one competitor for consider how it's used, Sharpedo is actually faster with speed boost in mind and does hurt a bit harder with, of course, a waterfall. But, of course, Crunch and the Psychic Fangs are actually stronger, even with Stab in mind. No, they're not. Um, but, yeah, Bruxius does hurt a lot, too, is what I'm trying to say. Bruxius has a stronger Ice Fang. How about that? Crunch is clearly not stronger. I'm, I'm just an idiot. But, yeah, Sharpedo and Bruxius, I do believe, are two relevant Pokemon, and I do believe they actually are competing for the same spots. Uh, Shaman. That thing gotta go. Uh, Shinotic. I don't know how viable it is. I, re I will be honest and say that. I don't think how, how well it is. It is definitely struggling when it comes to taking hits, but it can also utilize itself really well being a special defensive version with, of course, its uh, signature move, which, of course, lower attack. But I, like I said, I don't know how good it really is. Uh, same thing with Shuckle. I don't think it's going to stay or you, but if it's going to be banned, it's going to be banned because of its setting capabilities. Uh, Sigliff, same as ever. Um, they've got Steel Valley series. 
they could be saying, are you? I don't think they will be turning much, much worse than that. Uh, and now we come to the series of Pokemons. I'd say, why are you here? Uh, we're going to go a quick rundown here. Uh, Slowbro, get out. Slowking, okay, stay. Slowpuff, get out. Snorlax, get out. Spiritomb, okay. Sukun, get out. <laughs> um, do a quick run with Sukun. As long as Heliolisk is active in a tier, um, Sukun is going to be not as threatening. But if either of those goes, and you know, if Sukun moves up, then so will, of course, Heliolisk. If Heliolisk moves up and Sukun does not, then we are in real trouble. Uh, Swallow. Could say are you this time. With a special attack race, it might just very well be viable. Um, Talonflame, I do believe are you is fair for it. That's really all I can say. Um, Galewing is still a thing, though Flame Body is probably what most people are using now. Toga tomorrow, no. I don't think it will stay. Uh, Torkoal, no. Uh, Tornadoes, yes, it has to stay. Uh, it can't fall much lower than are you, I believe. And to think that that thing actually is sorry at the moment is very scary with, of course, Supersonic Sky Strike. Uh, Toe Cannon could fall even further. Uh, Toxic Croak, RU is good. I do. I definitely believe it could move to UU, but RU is definitely good for it. Uh, Turtonade is going to fall further. Type Lotion is going to fall further. I mean, come on, it's freaking terrible. Um, you heard me, Squillo. You heard me. I don't like Type Lotion. Uh, Tyrantrum could very well be moving up. Uh, to you, you it is still as dangerous as ever. Uh, Umbreon, no, that's thing gotta go. Uh, Yuxi's definitely gonna stay. Are you? I don't believe it could fall too, too much back. Uh, Vaporeon could very well, for the same reason as Yellicent Melodic, staying in this tier. Uh, Venomoth, I don't know. Um, I, it was banned previously, so, um, I mean, of course, the shield does to get it, of course, Quiver Dance is a factor for it, so who knows. Uh, Venusaur, yes, stay. Vicavolt, yes, well, might very well be staying. Vicavolt actually has roots and has a very, very good defensive stat. So I do believe Vicavolt starts to shine, finally, after a lot of struggle, really. Uh, Verision could very well be Yu-Yu this time around, mainly because of its uh, CMU capabilities, but... At the time being, Aryu is a good tier for it. Whimsicott. I don't know. I don't want it to stay Aryu, but if it does, then you know that Tailwind support I was talking about previously with Crawdont. Yeah, this is then this Pokemon is really relevant for that strat. Um then we got Wishy Washy and they are not gonna stay. Uh John Mega got bad previous generation. Uh, so did Sorark, actually, which are far below, which are the last Pokemon mentioned here. But um yeah, they're actually fall to the same kind of issue, so I wouldn't be surprised if uh, they're both actually got banned. So uh, yeah, that will actually be will be the complete rundown of like forty seven minutes of me rambling. If you say this long, this is awesome. I didn't intend this video to be that lengthy. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> Until then, guys, take care.